In this video, we will be walking through the Grundfos setup wizard and powering up a Grundfos CUE variable frequency drive for the first time. At the initial power up of a Grundfos CUE, you'll hear the fan running. That's just to let you know that the fan is in working condition. First screen that's going to pop up is your startup guide. At the end of this video, I'll show you how to come back to the startup guide if you make any mistakes during this process. We're going to hit the OK button to start the setup wizard. The first screen is for selecting your language. To change any options, you're going to hit the OK button and use the up and down arrow, change. This will be the same navigation throughout the entire setup wizard. I'm going to hit OK to select English and hit the down arrow. For my units, we're going to be selecting Imperial. That is US units. Hitting the down arrow, this takes a couple seconds before it goes to the next screen. Next screen is going to ask you for your pump family. If you're not using a Grunfuss pump, that's perfectly fine. In those cases, you're going to go down the menu structure until you see other. There it is. That would be for any other pump. In this case, we're using a standard motor as a representation, so we're going to select other. Hitting the down arrow, you're going to be selecting the motor type. The Grunfuss CUE will run permanent magnet, synchronous reluctance motors, or asynchronous motors. In this case, for this example, we're running an asynchronous motor, so we're going to leave it on the setting and hit down. This is the point where you're going to start entering nameplate data of your pump. These next few settings will be nameplate data from the pump. In this case, we're connected to a three-quarter horse motor. So all I have to do is hit OK and hit the down arrow, and I'm going to select 0.75 horsepower as my connected motor. Hitting the down arrow. We're going to be selecting the motor voltage again off the nameplate. In this case, we have a 230 volt. The down arrow, you're selecting your motor frequency. This is a 60 hertz motor. Matt's continuous current is also known as 10 load amps. In this particular motor that we're connected to, it's 1.4 amps. So to change this, we hit OK and use the up and down arrows on each number to change the value. So I'm going to change this to 1.4 amps, hit OK to save it, and then hit the down arrow to the next screen. This nominal speed for this particular motor is 1,725 RPMs. So we change the numbers the same way we did on the previous screen. Hit OK to save it, hit the down arrow to the next screen. This is if we have a sine wave filter or a DVD-T filter connected to the output side of the drive. In this case, we don't have one, so we're going to select no that we don't have a felt filter. This next screen is called um, the Automatic Motor Adaptation, or AMA. And basically what this does is this automatically configures um, advanced parameters of your motor. In most cases, you don't need to run this, but if you do want to run this feature, keep in mind that your motor will begin to run. We're going to skip that and go to the next screen. The next screen is talking about our acceleration and deceleration times. So acceleration time at startup and deceleration time during a stop. Keep going down to the next screen. We're going to be looking at our acceleration time used below minimum speed. So the CUE has a minimum speed setting. This is the time it takes from when a pump starts till it reaches that minimum speed. This setting can help prevent overloading during initial startup. So we're going to leave it at default setting at one second and go to the next screen. Now we're going to do the motor rotation to make sure your pump is turning in the right direction. So we're going to hit the OK button and say, yes, we want to do a motor rotation check. Then we hit the down arrow. It's going to let us know that the motor may be running in the wrong direction. So your pump may be running backwards. We hit OK. And it gives you a little instruction on what to do. In this case, we're going to be hitting the hand on button to start the motor. So this would be starting your pump, and you'd want to check your rotation. When you're done, you hit off, and it's going to ask you, was the direction of your pump rotation correct? If it was, obviously hit select yes. If you select no, then it reverses the phases internally. So you don't have to physically reverse phases coming out of the CUE draft. So we go to the next screen. We're going to enter minimum and maximum frequencies for the pump. 
We'll leave these at default for now, but you could change them to whatever the minimum speed you want to run at your pump. Maximum speed is the next setting. The next screen is talking about our application, whether it be in closed loop or open loop application. As the Grunfa CUE can run closed loop applications with the sensors running directly into the CUE. For this example, we're going to be setting that CUE up to run a constant pressure where we actually run the physical sensor directly into the CUE. In this case, however, if we're running an external signal from, let's say, a PLC or some other controller that's sending us an analog speed reference signal, we would select open loop in that condition. But we're not, so we're going to be running it as constant pressure. Hitting the down arrow, it's going to ask, what is the physical sensor that's wired in to the CUE? What is the sensor range? So here we have some preloaded settings. We also have an other option where you can go back in later and change those ranges for whatever sensor you're running. In this case, we'll select the 0 to 232 PSI as our example. We'll hit the down arrow, and it's going to ask us the sensor type. This next screen is talking about our sensor type feedback signal. In most cases, it's going to be a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, but you may have a 0 to 10 volt signal. Depending on the selection that you make on this screen, will determine what the dip switch settings behind the keypad are. So if you select a particular setting and it says you have to change a dip switch, what you do is physically remove the keypad by pulling down. Then behind the keypad, we have A53 and A54, these two little dip switches here. I represents current, U represents voltage. So if it says change A54 to voltage, we would then flip this switch to the left indicating that we have a voltage signal coming into the drive. I'm going to reinstall the keypad by just snapping it in. For this application, we're going to select 0 to 20. The next screen is referring to our external set point. If you're running this as a closed loop system, there's really no need to run an external set point. So in this case, we would go and select the option that shows two dashes. And that means that we are not running an external set point signal into this drive. Hitting OK, hit the down arrow. This next setting is going to be talking about the multi pump setup. This is if you're running two CUEs in alternation, or if you're running cascade up to three CUEs. In this case, we're running one CUE as a standalone unit, so we're going to hit no. The next screen is for your set point. This can be changed after you finish your setup wizard. So we'll leave it at what it's at right now. The next screen is talking about a Genie bus address. This Genie bus address only applies to Grunfuss CUEs being used with a Grunfuss controller, such as the CU352 controller that you'll see on our Hydro NPCs. If you're not using a Grunfuss controller, you can skip this setting. So once we hit the next, it lets us know the basic setup is complete and we'll take you to the home screen. So there we can see our set point. We can see that the pump is stopped and we're running at constant pressure. If you make a mistake and you want to go back and redo the startup wizard, you can hit the star button here and move down the screens until you find startup guide. From there, just hitting OK, we'll run, run you back through the startup guide. So this video concludes how to power up and set up a Grunfuss CUE.